What do you want to get better at? Are there skills you need to learn? You're not asking for referrals. I would just encourage you to Finding the right mentor for you. All right, now we're recording. Um, I'm just gonna, why don't we have a couple people jump out and share something that, um, oh, we lost audio. Oh, you can't hear me? We can hear you. I, I can hear you, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, for a moment, I, I guess we lost the audio. So as long as we're good, then we're good. Um, so why don't we get started with um, if people want to jump out and share something, a victory from this past week, and maybe something that you're excited for for this week. You guys are all shy today. Hi, Avery. I'll jump out and share something I'm excited about. Um, just looking at expanding my business. As you know, I started doing um, with the math tutoring. And now um, I'm also doing a lot of Excel. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at uh, doing, putting together a webinar and formulating a lesson plan to do a basic and an intermediate Excel class. That's awesome. That and would have been a lot of help to me. I took a class in, uh, in Excel in college and it was really hard. <laughs> I didn't do great in that one. Yes, yeah, so I'm excited about that. You know, I think one of the things too is using skills that I've um, developed over the years. And like, I've been doing Excel for, oh my gosh, many, many years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I worked for the state of New Jersey for 28 years. So most of that time and before that, I've been using Excel. So I have a lot of experience and just glad to uh, be able to share it with people. And I think one of the things too is that the skills that we have and that we may done before that we have in our backpack, that there mm -hmm. comes time when we can take out those skills and you know um, redevelop them so we can you know continue to use them to help others. So I'm excited about you know doing that. That's awesome! Yay! That's amazing! Thank you for sharing. Does anyone else have a victory they want to share or something great that happened to them this last week? I'll jump out. Sure. It's Amy. Um, so Jess and I have been working on my website, which has been really exciting and informative and definitely a learning curve for me. I'm excited to get that up and running. And I started my own shop in Teespring. Oh, wow. So that's exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. I like your camera view right now. It's like the clouds going by. It's kind of cool. Yeah. He's <laughs> on the dashboard of your car, but it looks pretty neat. Well, I just came through some major storms. So enjoy the sunshine while it's here. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of storms here today or this past week too. I don't know if you guys know or saw, but we had snow um, and hail and ice and all that fun stuff in Scottsdale. And I was like, wait, I thought I moved away from Canada and then I go outside and I have to wipe the snow off my car and I'm like this doesn't something doesn't add up here so it was it's been a very interesting week over here um, my dog saw snow for the first time and I, I thought he would be excited about it he just kind of looked at it and then turned away and I was like well there we go that was kind of anticlimactic but yeah okay so we're gonna jump in and get started um I guess like I'll kind of start and just talk about some random bits. And then if you guys have questions, um, you can feel free to ask. So what I want to know right off the bat is um, raise your hand or I guess say in the chat is who here is on Clubhouse? Got a couple of you. I was in one with you the other night, Avery. Oh, I you were? You the car one. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Karen yeah. And a few other guys. It was like yeah. really good. It was great. Just like it's weird because you can't comment or anything. It's, mm -hmm. it's well, I suppose like podcasting, but you know, yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, I was on a uh, I was on a car. I was invited. So yeah, Linda was there. That was awesome. Um, but I was actually invited to be someone. I had been in a clubhouse room with someone, and um, I'll I'll explain. Actually, let me explain what clubhouse is first. Yeah. 
So Clubhouse is right now, just full disclosure, it's only available to users that have iPhones. So our good friend Diana is just, um, she's got a lot of FOMO right now um, as she sits there crying tears <laughs> on Android. But, but yeah, so Clubhouse is, um, is iOS only. And it's super interesting because right now it's invite only. So it started off super exclusive and it was kind of a place for like minds in the business, entrepreneurial startup, all those different areas to and actors, act, whatever. Uh, it was kind of like the elite of society had this app and they were able to talk to each other. And, you know, I've my, I have some friends that have been on it for a while and, you know, basically it's kind of like a live podcast. Um, so you can tune in to join rooms with people and you can just kind of listen to a panel of speakers that are talking about different subjects. And, um, there's a bunch of different subjects. I've seen one where it was like late night chats about aliens. And then another one where it's like a bunch of people will get together and they'll be like free mastermind and, you know, marketing tips for your business in, you know, in, uh, in 2021 and all that stuff. So there's, there's definitely a lot of, um, a diversity of thought on there. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So now the caveat is you have to be invited by someone. Um, so if you guys aren't on it right now and you go to try to download it from the app store, I'm pretty confident that at this point you still can't um, download it. There is a waiting list, but yeah, so you, you kind of have to be invited uh, by other people. And I see people offering some invites. Maybe I'll give away an invite and uh, today on the live coaching, because I have three. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll ask you guys a quiz question and just throw someone a, uh, a link to Clubhouse if that's what you guys are interested in. But yeah, so Clubhouse actually offers great networking opportunities because you can start rooms and uh, ping basically everyone that you follow to join in on your room. And like Linda said, like I was... Uh, I was in this uh, automotive room and I actually had, I was just sitting in the room with, with one of the guys the other day. Um, <laughs> we've got people trying to sell, Bruce is trying to peddle out his invites here in the comment section. Um, I'll sell mine for $49, $49.99. So, that, that, you know, we got some competition in the market here. But anyways, so yeah, actually it is kind of funny because there is a market for, clubhouse invites people have been selling them on ebay for like hundreds of dollars and uh <laughs> jessica <laughs> and uh yeah so we um basically there's clubhouse is just it's a lot of fun um i was and as i said earlier i was sitting on in a in a room with someone and they you know if if you get the opportunity to go up on stage on and speak um and which basically you have to be invited up to speak you can ask to speak and so they'll have like live q and a's where they'll invite people up onto the panel to ask a question and then take them off um but then there's moderators and the moderators are the ones that kind of invite everyone up there so basically i was able to i was just in a room with someone and they messaged me they found me on instagram actually and they sent me a message and they said hey you know i was just in clubhouse room with you the actual rate is 4.16 i don't know i don't know how to speak to the the actual rates but um the uh <laughs> but <Come> with me. <laughs> it's okay um but yeah, so I was in I was in this clubhouse room and I was able to get up on stage. And so beca because I was seen as an authority in the automotive influencer space, which was awesome because I was actually the only woman on that stage for a really long time, except for some that um, asked some questions. So it was kind of cool to be in there and you actually will get notifications. So if you guys all follow me on Clubhouse, which you should, I'm just at Avery Sly, um, then it's 1111, as I said that. So now you guys have to do it. If, if you believe in numerology, it's 1111, it's you got to follow Avery Sly on Clubhouse. Um, so yeah, if you follow me, basically you'll get a notification anytime that I'm in a room with other people. So you can kind of see what I'm up to and all that stuff as well. Thank you for already following me. I, I appreciate it. But what I want to, the reason why I bring up Clubhouse 
is because, <clears throat> and I have a, see a couple questions in here. I think that Clubhouse really offers a lot of value for business. Now, it's a great networking opportunity as long as you can kind of get yourself on that stage. And I don't want to, I don't just want to like preach to you guys about Clubhouse because honestly, on Clubhouse, they talk a lot about being on Clubhouse. If you guys haven't noticed already, those of you that are on there, um, <clears throat> We've got, we still got some people peddling invites out here in the comment section. The entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. So if you guys want, want one, just throw, throw someone, see, um, you can, you can, uh, DM for invites now and all that stuff. So yeah, you guys can all exchange invites if you got, if you want one again, maybe I'll give one away, um, just as a, just as a fun quiz one. So I have three. So yeah, so we'll, maybe we'll do that. If you guys are interested, let me know. Maybe we can do a fun little quiz on like social media or something see how you guys are holding up yeah okay cool yeah we'll do it sure why not um so and you know we have some other people with invites too so maybe we can give out a couple and we can have them ask quiz questions and then if you get their quiz question we, we could make this really fun you guys okay anyways i want to make sure i'm providing value so based if you're if you're in clubhouse when you get in there what you want to do is you want to take it as an opportunity to network. You can get in some rooms with some pretty cool people. You can get into rooms. I was once in a room. Um, I have a friend who is an artist. He started a room and it was just me and him for like a couple minutes. And then a few people came in. There was only six of us in the room total, but we had a fantastic conversation. And in that situation, we basically just anyone that joined the room, we pulled them up on stage and we had a conversation with them. Um, I know my mom does a weekly one, I think on Sunday. Sundays, but you can also, that's exactly it. You can kind of schedule them in advance and let people know that you're going live on Clubhouse. It's a really cool platform and it converts. So I've been able to, I've seen my friends and I've done it myself where I've been able to get followers to my Instagram just through Clubhouse. It is audio only right now. So there's no like comments and stuff like that um, that are allowed. Uh, you can only speak if you are pulled onto the stage. So it is pretty cool. And um, in terms of using it, I saw a question earlier, um, and then I'll open it to questions, not only about Clubhouse, but also about other social media as well. Um, so when it comes to Clubhouse and using it for your network marketing business, I think there's a great opportunity because there's, and, and a lot of it is just visibility, getting yourself in those rooms and establishing your credibility whenever you have an opportunity to speak. Now, you know, you, you don't always get a chance to speak and that's fine, but then you can use the platform to learn. So even if you aren't actively speaking in that room, I would just, you know, a lot of them provide a lot of value too. Now, don't, now full disclosure guys, unless the room is now this, I mean this in the most polite and respectful way possible, but unless the room is started by me, don't go in any of the social media ones. It's so, it's uh, honestly, it's, it's really painful because they're like, yeah. And then you just like put a hashtag on your post. And I'm like, why? It, it's literally the worst. It's, it's the worst. <laughs> it, they don't provide any value in the social media rooms. I'm saving you guys time, but actually, yeah, you can just put it on, on your phone and it's like listening to a phone call, like listening to a podcast. You can just set your phone down and listen to clubhouse in the background while you do other stuff. So it's, it's really cool. You can get a lot of knowledge from it in terms of network marketing. I would, you can start rooms about like your side hustle. You can start rooms to connect with other network marketers and see what they're doing. You can, you can join other rooms and stuff like that. So it, it really is a fantastic networking opportunity. Um, and like, I, just as an example, um, we're starting our new pet services business or pet services marketing business. And I was able to connect on Clubhouse with a guy that started a like multi-million dollar online dog training program. So that you can connect with people in your avatar as well, which is great. Um, okay. So now I'll open it up to some questions and uh, you guys can just like raise your hand or comment or send me a message um, privately if you guys are feeling shy. And uh, yeah, just anyone who has a question about literally anything social media, let me know. Hey, Avery, I have a question. Sure. It's Ralph. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been really dragging my feet on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm, I can do it, do a bio as a CPA, mm -hmm. but I also am doing network marketing. 
Yep. And I'd like to get your thoughts on trying to combine those in a bio or should I keep separate ones? What's your thoughts there? I would say when it comes to creating your LinkedIn summary, I think it's important to, um, let me see. And I know we have some other people in, in the room as well that are that are um, LinkedIn, LinkedIn savvy as well. But I would say that I would utilize the summary space on your LinkedIn and share both of those things about yourself. You can, if you look at my mom's example, um, just on her Susan Sly LinkedIn page, she has an excellent summary that talks about multiple, she's obviously done a lot of stuff. So she has her accolades on there. Um, and so it's great to, I would, I would kind of, I would include both of those aspects of yourself. And you can do that in bullet points. You can do it in sentences. You can share some of your big accomplishments from both. Um, however you want to do it, I definitely think it's worth, it, it will add value to include both in your summary. Good. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then I see a question in the, um, in the comments or in the, in the chat here. So how do I add music on Instagram? Thank you for asking. I will share my screen. Now, here's the full disclosure and just to avoid any confusion. If you have a business account, now there are three types of accounts. Can anyone tell me the three types of Instagram accounts? Personal, creator, and business. Yes, who was that? Rebecca. Rebecca, congratulations. If you want a clubhouse invite, you, you can have one. I have five I can give away. Oh, excellent. Ooh. Uh, I, or I think I might be down to three. <laughs> Well, yes. So you're exactly right. So there are three kinds of accounts. There's a personal account, which means that you are not a business or a creator. You're just chilling. You can have a private account if that's your case um, and all that stuff. There's a creator account and that's for individuals. And that is what I recommend for many of you in this room today. Um, if you don't know, there's a couple ways to tell. So one is that if you go to your profile, you should be able to see a, an option here that says insights, right? On under edit profile and in one of these little boxes here, bottom left box, there's one that says insights. Um, and I, I really wish I had a cursor on my phone so I could show you, but that's one of the indicators that you have a business profile. The other is that if you click on the hamburger up in the top right corner, which is also just the three lines, um, but it's a hamburger if you have imagination and, uh, or if you're hungry. Um, and then you go to settings here and then you go to account. Then it'll say you've got these two options options on the bottom. Um, oh, that's lovely. Um, so you can have, um, it'll say switch account type. Now, if it says switch account type, that means that you have, you've already set your account to something. Now, this is actually, they've changed this since I last opened it. So if you go, if you tap on switch account type, these options pop up, switch to personal account and switch to business. If you are a personal account right now, it will say switch to creator and switch to business. The value in this is that you get access to insights. Now to add music, you cannot be a business profile. The option does just, just does not come up. Um, and why that is, I, I honestly don't know, but my speculation is that it's something to do with like copyright and not wanting to use like business and music. But if you are a creator, you can, or if you're a personal account, you can add music, but you cannot do it if you have a business account. I, for this reason, and um, you know, outside of this, there's not too much reasoning, but for this reason, I do recommend that if you are an individual, um, that you have a creator account and not a business account, just because a creator is someone who is, it can, you can still be an entrepreneur and be a creator, but a creator is an individual. A business is more a brick and mortar business. So like, for example, this uh, car dealership that I work with, they are a business account because they have a physical location versus um, myself, I'm a creator because I'm a person. So on that note, to add music to your stories, it's super simple. Um, and to add it to reels, it's quite simple as well, but I'll answer for stories. So to get to your Instagram story, just in case anyone um, does, isn't familiar, and I'm not going to call you out, I'll just show you. Maybe we're all familiar, but you know. So there's a couple different ways. The best way is to go to your homepage. So the little home button here in the bottom left corner, 
and it's going to look something like this, or you should have some circles on the top as long as you're following people. And then you've got your feed here. All you want to do is swipe from the left side of your phone over to the right, and you'll see that the camera opens and there's my beautiful face in double. So that's going to be how you open your story. Now I'm just going to take a picture. Um, it's the same as it's the same function as taking a picture on your phone. You can just tap this white circle here and now I have a picture. Now that I have this, this is where I can add music. So up here at the top, and I'm just going to doodle to show you guys what I mean. Up here at the top, we have all these little options here. Um, I can't doodle and show you the options, but these are the ones. So we've got um, this, this guy here, the downward arrow on, the, we'll start from the left and go to the right. I'm gonna do a super quick overview. Down arrow pointing at the line, that's to save your story to your camera roll. The one to the right of that is filters. Don't worry about that too much. Um, this is links. Um, now you can't, unless you have over 10,000 followers, this isn't super important, but you can do a link on your story to an IGTV video, which just means that someone will swipe up. Um, the next one over here, the square with the little smiley face, that's going to be our stickers option where you will find basically everything. And then the one to the right is just the doodle, which is how I did that line. And then the last one is the text option. So I can just add some text to it, move it around, do all this jazz. I'm not going to get too much in the stories on in this particular um, option because I'm just taking a really long time to answer this question, but I think there's some value in the other stuff too. So this little sticker guy here, we'll click on him and then you'll have all these options pop up. Sorry, there's a little bit of a delay between um, my screen share. And um, so basically we've got location mention, hashtag, donation, GIF, music. These are all fun. I honestly, if you guys have the time, which I, I'm pretty sure you guys all have five minutes in your day, I don't want to spend time going over all these. I do that at other uh, times. Today's not that day, but I can come back at some point, but we've got music right here. So I implore you to just kind of play around with these different options. Um, and if you're still confused about stuff, you can always contact me and ask me questions. I just ask that you email me the questions instead. Uh, I don't always get back to you on Instagram, um, which I think is, is kind of funny, but that's not the best place to reach me. Um, so then we got music here and you just click on it and then you can search basically any song under the song, sun. So these are just some recommended songs for me based on what I've used in the past, but you can go, you can put any, any music in here, whether it's Kodak Black, or Frank Sinatra. You can see that once you start typing it in, it'll bring you a bunch of songs here, and then I'll just choose a random one. Um. No, it's not gonna play. But it, it will usually just play the music, and then that's all you have to do. Now, if you wanna get it out of the way, you just tap, tap this guy, and just drag him out of the frame. And now you have music on there, but you don't have that big clunky album thing taking up space on your phone. So now if you, if I posted this, you would still be able to hear the music, but it's not visible. And normally it plays the music while you're in this editing screen. So you know that the music's been added, but right now it's not playing. So um, that is, that is how to add music to um, stories. Now I didn't have the chat open. Let's see. Got some other questions here. If anyone wants to um, jump out and ask a question, go ahead. Audrey, I got lost. I don't know what kind of account I do have in my Instagram. Sure. I am in setting accounts and I don't see that auction switch. Okay, let me... Where, um, where, where, so this is what I have. I have iPhone 11. Let's see. Okay. Um, for, so, uh, maybe just here, go back to this page. Um, so go exit out of where you are and then we can follow, um, through together and then maybe that'll help here. Okay. Um, so you're just going to go to your profile page, which is the little person in the bottom right corner, um, or the yes. little picture. And then it should look something like this. And then up yeah. in the top right corner, we have the three lines. Click on Yes. The I click on it. I have setting archive. Yep. I don't have um, insights. Click on um, go to settings. Yes. And then account here at the third from the bottom. Account. And okay. then 
it, it should have the options in blue to um, create a professional account here at the bottom. Oh yeah, it said add a new professional account. Yeah, so you can add it. I, I think that's the new way of doing it. I, um, I honestly, I already have a professional account. So if that's the only option, um, click on that and then Instagram will walk you through the steps. It's super simple. Um, I'm not going to walk you guys through it, but it, it sure. does walk you through how to but do it. For me, for my uh, small business, I'm just uh, beginning. Yeah. What do you recommend for me? Um, I would just say a creator account for now, and you can always switch to a business account later. There's no consequence for switching. Um, the yeah. only the only time that there can be some uh, problems in switching is that if you go back to a personal account, you will lose some of your insights. Um, and then also with insights, which is just information about your profile, some data, like how many people visit, um, what your followers look like and all that stuff, that does take a, a couple days to populate as well. So once you've switched, um, then you will have access to the insights and you'll be able to see them, um, which kind of look like this. And if you guys want me to go over insights, I can as well. Um, but yeah, that's how you get there. And then I would recommend a creator account for now. And can we go back to the beginning in, if we don't want that account? Yeah, no? you can. Yeah, so okay. just by following those exact same steps here, you can, when you go back to this and um, you'll have the option to switch account type um, and you can go back to a personal account and there's no, you just lose insights. So you only have insights if you have a um, creator or business account. I would like to have the insights as you explained before. I hear you, it's amazing. Yeah, it does provide a lot of value and it can be great in terms of building your business as well and just kind of understanding who you're reaching on social media, which is super valuable. Um, we're still talking about clubhouse invites in the chat. Um, does anyone else, does it harm to switch from a business to creator account? No. So the only, again, the only difference really is that, that I've noticed because I manage creator accounts, I manage business accounts and I I don't actually manage any personal accounts because my personal account is, is a creator account. Um, so the real only difference that I have noticed is just that they are, they won't let you play music. And I think there are some other things going on, like some other restrictions as well, but that's the only one that I've really personally encountered. There is not, there's not going to be a like dip in your engagement or anything like that if you switch between those two. Now, um, just as an important note as well, on Instagram, if you are, um, if you're very indecisive and can't decide, do I want my profile to be pi private? Do I want it to be public? Um, how, what should I share on there? I think there, because I, I know a lot of people are concerned about privacy. I am as well. And so here, here are my rapid fire privacy tips. One is that when you're posting on your story, which is where we just were, um, let's say you're at the theme park and you take a picture. Um, what I always do, and this is because I have a lot of weird male followers um, and ladies out there, you will, you're probably familiar with, and you know, I know there's weird, weird ladies out there too. So I'm, we're, we've all probably experienced it at some point in our life, but I have a lot of like interesting people some, you know, interesting individuals that, uh, that follow me on social media and I don't want them to know where I am. I don't want them to know where I live. I like a lot of people think I live in LA and I'm okay with that. Like, sure. Think I live in LA. So what I'll do is I'll actually take a picture or you can even take it on your camera roll. Um, which means that you can just take it on your regular phone camera. You can take a picture and then you can upload that picture to your story like this. So, and I know this is a bad picture, but the, you can save options. Um, basically you can post on your story later so that you don't post when you're actually at a location. And that's always what I recommend. Anytime I travel somewhere like this track photo, um, I posted it six days ago, but I was at the track three weeks ago. So I, I just don't like people knowing where I am when I'm there. And those are just some tips. Um, also, when it comes to having your information in your profile, I just clicked on edit profile to get to this page, just in case you're following along. When it comes to your contact information, so your email, um, the contact options right here, if you don't see this, then you probably don't have a creator business account. Um, I think you have to have one to add the contact options. Do not put, unless, unless your goal is to generate leads for your network marketing business, for your side hustle, for your brick and mortar business, 
don't put your personal email in here. This is one of my, I have Avery Sly 1. I have Avery Sly 2. I have Avery Sly 3. I have all those emails at gmail.com so that I can send them different places. I actually have one that I just send marketing emails to so I can get inspiration and see what companies are up to. So if you're a marketing person like me and you like that kind of stuff and you like to nerd out about marketing, but also steal people's ideas, that's how I recommend doing it. But yeah, don't put your main one in there. Don't put your phone number unless it's your business's phone number. And what I mean by that, is like, for example, um, Barbara Kane, she, she sells chocolates. She can have her phone number in there because people are going to call her to place an order, but that's the only real acceptable time. And if, and preferably your business number isn't exactly the same as your home phone number, but people can use the access, this information and use it to do whatever they want. I just never trust people to do it. So, um, I saw another question. I don't see creator, just video creator, gaming creator, etc. Oh, what the heck? Um, let me, so in, there are, uh, you might be in the category section, um, which is, I guess, um, because I'm already a creator, so there's not, there wasn't an option for me to change between, um, but it should be right here, um, and if you're in the category section, um, it'll get, it, it'll give you an option to choose a category. So basically mine is just for fun, but you can't, it doesn't show up. Um, let me actually, so this page, for example, there's this automotive dealership. So that's what, what kind of business they are. And it shows up right under their name here. It says automotive dealership. Um, so that's exactly what the category is going to do. For many of you, it'll just be entrepreneur. And so you can just search up entrepreneur and use that as your category. Avery, just so you know, I'm here. Oh, hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> so I understand you, uh, you covered Clubhouse. Um, and uh, I see a lot of invites are happening, which is so fun in the community, which is fantastic. And uh, I know you guys are getting a lot of insight into Instagram. Uh, we seem to be on a social media theme. Um, and the thing I'm gonna jump out and say, well, firstly, Avery's doing an amazing job. Let's give her some props, right? <laughs> um, I'd love to hear in the chat, what, what's something you've learned so far from this live coaching? Because one of the visions of the agency is to really give back. And, and oftentimes you're sitting there alone as a business owner and maybe Anne's thinking, I know I need to be on Instagram, but I'm not sure what to do. And yes, you can search the internet and go down a lot of rabbit holes. But one of the things we want to do is provide incredible value to uplift small business owners like all of you. So that's why we do these live coachings. And I was just um, messaging with Tisha. And I think what we're going to do is have a monthly just social media live coaching where you can come and ask your questions with Avery, um, which is amazing because it's definitely her zone of genius. And, um, and so Margo said, I didn't know Clubhouse existed. And I'll just jump out so very quickly, something very cool that has happened in my life with Clubhouse. So I, um, myself and a couple of incredible badass girlfriends, Rebecca Zung, um, she was voted the number one attorney in the US. She's been on all the major media. She, her in, her um, YouTube channel has over 6 million views. Um, and Lori Harder, who's a good longtime friend of mine, um, has founded three seven-figure businesses. So we started this thing called the FBS, the Femme Boss Squad. So every Sunday we do a clubhouse. It's branded as FBS. It is specifically for women founders. That's who it is. Like this week we're doing how to define your value proposition. So it's, it's for anyone who's got a business. But last week we talked about fundraising because only 2% of women led pitches get funded. And as a co-CEO, I have a, a brand new announcement as a co-CEO of a company that is very close to having a valuation of $250 million. Um, there's very likely going to be some big press about us in the co next coming months. Um, you know, it's, it's a tough world to be in. So we, we came together and did this, but the fun part was through this group of women, I'm meeting incredible women. Um, how many of you have ever seen the overnight oats at Whole Foods? Or you know what overnight oats is when you soak oats in a mason jar and you eat them the next day, right? Are you guys familiar with that? 
<laughs> overnight oats. Yes, Lisa says. So I met um, this woman, Rachel, who she started an overnight oats company and she's in 700 grocery stores in the United States, and uh, which is a huge market penetration because there are six um, in the United States, there are 40,000 grocery stores. So she's already got a significant penetration there. And so now she's coming to me to get funding advice. So I have a session with her next week. And so you're going to meet a lot of really amazing people in Clubhouse. And my advice to you is um, it's, it's not just about you talking, get together with a couple of people and commit to do eight straight weeks at the same time, brand it. Um, you know, it's just incredible, right? So just a, that is a Clubhouse tip. I met the woman who designed the first iteration of Siri for Apple. And she is one of the FBS squad girls, Susan Brazer. So it, like just meeting amazing, amazing people. So I want to sh throw that up for Clubhouse. If you need a workaround, um, I feel like I need to bless people if you have an Android because we're iPhone people. Um, and all my tech team, we're all Mac and iPhone people. But God bless you if you haven't come over to the light yet. You can get on Clubhouse on your iPad. You can get on on your iPad if that's something that you want to do. But come to the light. You're going to make more money when you convert to Mac. Just embrace it. Um, that was an unsolicited. <laughs> this message is sponsored by Apple. This yes, not not yet, <laughs> but maybe someday soon. Um, another. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd love to take, if you've got social media questions, ask Avery. Um, if you've got business strategy questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those. Um, you can put them in the chat. You can jump out and ask them. A couple of quick announcements. Um, if you are um, feeling really bored um, tomorrow, I'm going to be on a panel of um, one of the most um, watched startups um, here in the Arizona area, and I'm going to be talking about um, the grittiness of a startup. So you're more than welcome to join. I'll post that on social. And then I'm going to be a guest on um, Glenn and Mindy Stern's podcast, Grit Happens. So Glenn Stearns is my friend. He was the original undercover billionaire on Discovery. He has a whole new series. Um, Mindy called me this morning and said, you know, we're thinking of who's the grittiest person we know and it's you, you know, will you be on the show? So I'm going to be on that. So check that out. Um, and so we also, a couple other quick announcements is um, the ultimate marketing experience is coming up. We did move the date. There were a couple of strategic reasons why we did it. Um, I will tell you the people who attended the last one, um, they're on fire. Um, Sylvie Dow started a podcast. She is crushing it. Um, one of the people who attended is now building a startup. I did a business blueprint session with her. We took that from a small business to how she could actually take it to a $3 billion valuation. Billion with a B. I have a question. How many of you know you're playing small and thinking small? How many of you know that? Okay, so why wouldn't you spend $147 and come to this event and think bigger? You're going to be one of my friends who's training. She has started uh, 14 startups. 14. As a woman, it's crazy. Unicorn territory. 14 successful startups. So um, go get your ticket. They're on sale until Sunday night. Um, and you just go to the Agency 8 website. But yes, Linda has her ticket. I am doing an invitation only event for women uh, this fall here in Scottsdale. It's going to be at the, a beautiful, beautiful resort. And you have to apply to come. There are some very specific KPIs um, in order to come. You um, have must have a business. The business has to have a certain, um, you know, your biggest year has to be at least six figures. And it's for women who want to break through and actually get to that seven to eight figure zone of genius. And so again, it's going to be by application only. One of our staff, when you apply, is going to call you. They're going to tell you if the event's right for you or not. If it's not right for you, then um, that's okay. It'll be right for you eventually. So, um, and it's going to be very, very exclusive. So that is coming up soon. And uh, so, yeah, we're ready for the next questions. Why should we switch from um, <laughs> Android to <laughs> I just, I just added that. Okay. All right. So PJ, or sorry, um, Hadass says, I'd love to hear from Avery about sharing TikTok to Reels and Fleets. What, reels and, and what, sorry? 
had asked. It's, it's a Twitter's uh, version of the same thing. Oh, I don't use Twitter. I'm not cool enough. I'm not cool enough for Twitter, but um, <laughs> not I can old you... enough is what you mean. <laughs> no, it's it's not that. It's just I I um I'm uh all of my followers are are uh I guess um of of strong opinions that I don't share so I just kind of stay away from there and then I can mm. go on occasionally to repost memes um so I'm, I can't unfortunately speak to fleet but I can talk about Instagram because Instagram is my home well hopefully not but anyways I'm, I'm, I digress so basically when it comes to sharing TikTok to Instagram it's probably one of the best things that you can do to provide value for yourself on both platforms and I, I don't I'm not even kidding guys if you are putting the time effort and energy using InShot which is right here guys these are all my photo editing apps um, but InShot right here if you are using that and you're spending the time to put together a video, to add some music to it, if you're dedicating that time to creating a TikTok, you are doing yourself a disservice if you're not posting it on Reels as long as it performs well. And I'm adding that little aside too. So now I'm going to open my TikTok and full disclosure, there will be loud sounds because I cannot turn down the volume on my phone while I'm screen sharing, or it turns down the volume on my computer and I can't hear your beautiful voices. So I'm just going to go through this really fast. Okay. So basically I just opened TikTok and went to my homepage here. Um, we're going to ignore this video because it's having some problems. Um, but anyways, so what you're going to do, and actually it's great that you asked this question because I was just thinking about doing this myself. So you can see here, this is my TikTok. If you don't follow me already, it's, um, it's not 1111 this time, but it's 1143 and that's pretty good. So you guys can, <laughs> you guys can follow me. Um, mama for the, for the reference, I told them to follow me on clubhouse right when it was 1111. And I was like, it's a sign that you've got to follow me on clubhouse now. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is, this is my TikTok page. Um, and basically if you are interested in sharing a TikTok to your Instagram, here's the best way to do it. So what I first recommend is that if it does well on TikTok, it's also probably going to do well, if not even better, on Instagram. And it doesn't mean it has to be a, a fantastic performing video, but generally I those are the ones I choose. Now, what that means, it can be different for everyone. It can mean maybe you got a hundred views and that was your best performing video. That's great. Put it on Instagram. A lot of us are, you know, look for content to post on our Instagram anyways. And this is a fun way to get involved with Reels. So all I'm going to do, and there's a reason why I do what I do. So all of my content is posted to TikTok first. So I really loved this best Uber ever video. Um, it's my, it's uh, the dealership I work at. This is a Bugatti Veyron and I pretend it's my Uber. And of course, a lot of people in the comments thought I was serious. And I even had some guy who was like, this is BS. Like you Ubers have to have four doors by law. And I'm like, wow, thank you for telling me that this is totally real. So that's not the point though. So I'm going to take this video. I'm not going to play it. If you guys want to watch it, you guys can go watch it on my page. I'm going to click on these three dots here on the right hand side. So you've got profile picture, the heart, the comment, and then below that we've got these three dots. When you click on that, there should be these options. Now, all, you, all you're going to do, and there's a reason for this, is you're going to save the video right here by clicking on save video. Unlike Instagram, TikTok conveniently labels all their bits. So it's easier to know what you're doing. So I just clicked save video. Now I'm going to do done. Okay. I'm going to exit out of here and I'm going to go to Instagram. I'm going to go to my profile and then there's a plus button here in the top right corner. I'm going to click on the plus. And this is going to provide you with an option for all of the different posting styles that you have on Instagram. I'm going to select real and then I'm going to go and pull this from my camera roll. For Avery? Yeah. yeah. Also, are squeaking because of, of carbon carbon ceramics. Don't worry, they don't have to change the brain, change the bikes on the Bugatti Veyron. So now basically all I've done is I just chose the video from my camera roll. Um, I clicked on next because there's nothing else I want to add. And then I clicked on share too. Now all you have to do is write a caption here. And the reason why I saved it from TikTok first is because of our friendly little watermark here. Now you can, it's kind of hard to see, but it says TikTok and then it says at drive with Aves. A great thing about that watermark, even if it may bother you, is that people now know on Instagram 
that you are also on TikTok and they might be curious about this video. They might say, oh, she is, she's drive with Aves. And then I'm going to go and, you know, check out her profile. The other reason why this is important. And as you, as you grow, it, it is important as well is because once you have content that you're creating that other people are sharing else out there on the internet, just as a funny story, as an aside, um, I once found a, I had a friend tag me in a video of myself and it's me putting gas in a Lamborghini and it was on a theme page out of India and they put Indian music over it and they didn't give me any credit. So you will find your videos in the craziest places if they go viral. Um, and uh, like the caption wasn't in English and I was like, hey, this is my video. And he's like, send me more and I'll post more content. And I'm like, no, it's okay. Um, so, but yeah, you will find your content in the craziest places. So having that watermark on it is just another way to kind of have it branded to you. Now, all you have to do here is Add a caption. And when it comes to sharing TikToks to other platforms, I just, I keep the video the exact same because chances are people that saw it on my TikTok don't necessarily follow me on Instagram. Um, and so you can repost the exact same video without modifying it. And that way you have another way of posting your content. Now I can't speak to how fleet, fleets, fleet works, but you can essentially, in my, in my opinion, you can do this exact same method for that as well. And I'm actually going to do this, but not right now. <laughs> Avery, keep, keep an eye out for this reel. I'll post it for you guys. That's awesome, Avery. Um, I want to make sure we got a couple other questions um, and you guys are learning a lot, which is outstanding. Um, Linda Bradbury says, you know, should we get an accountability yeah. partner? So the, here's the thing I want to say about accountability partners in general. Um, you want to ask yourself why you want an accountability partner. So if it's because you're looking for someone to literally kick your butt, that is a hundred percent the wrong reason to have an accountability partner. You want to, if you, if I have a philosophy that, you know, the people that are my greatest mentors, I rarely need to talk to them because I'm inspired enough by what they're doing in the world that it's not that I'm looking for hand-holding. I'm very, very self-motivated. And now I'm not saying, Linda, that's you. Um, I think as long as your reason isn't you want someone to kick your butt, then I think that's, you know, that's the first thing. The second thing I want to say is an accountability partner who's on a very similar path is a really good thing. That's where, you know, masterminds come into play where you, you're you both on a similar trajectory. So I want to share a couple of those things first. And I know, Linda, you want to jump out and just provide some clarity. So Linda, do you want to jump out there? It's a great yeah. question. Yeah, no, thanks, Susan. Yeah, no, I, I definitely don't need the motivation like that. But sometimes, like, I suppose when you just, like, I don't know, podcast, just to make, I don't know, between you, if you're just new to it and, you, and you, you, you know, just checking it's the right thing and so you can move quicker. I suppose, like you say, the mastermind, and I, t I totally get the mastermind. I suppose it's, and you might be competitors, but it doesn't, well, you, no one's ever competitor really like that, but it's just working with someone. So, you you know, you're just making sure you completely understand it and you can move quicker. And I think that's, well, it might not be, maybe you just need to, Dig a bit deeper yourself. I don't know. I suppose you well, hear different things, really. Yeah, and I think that um, that which provides you know a tremendous amount of insight. So think about what you want, and this is a great teaching moment for everyone. You know, step one is what do you want. So if Linda says, "Yeah, I want to, I want to start a podcast." And there are people in our community like Sylvie who's done it. And I, th I don't know what, ep I was a guest on her show yesterday. I don't know what episode she's on, but she did everything we told her to do, which was get, you know, brand the podcast, watch the show, who's the avatar, what is it about, um, decide who it is you want to interview, go and interview a minimum of five people on your Zoom so that when you deploy that podcast on um, iTunes and Spotify and so on, iTunes likes you to have at least five shows before you deploy. And so thinking about all of that and looking for someone who also wants to do something similar so you can hold each other capable, not accountable to those. That's those, a better word. <laughs> yeah. 
yet to those weekly goals. So you deploy, right? And sometimes it's it's not so much we need someone to kick us in the arse, right, Linda? It's that we're, you know, we want to Ha it's it's like going and working out. Sometimes we don't feel like it, but just knowing that someone is on a similar path makes us get that stuff done. So, which is fantastic. Can I jump out and answer two questions here? Um, one of them you already answered. So um, PJ asked, does, uh, should we use the same username in TikTok as IG? And I just want to uh, address that here as much as possible. And my mom already said this, but as much as possible, you want to use the same username across platforms, or if that's not possible, you want to get as close to it as possible. And here's a couple of reasons why. One is that if you are a business, when you have a business card and you put your social media on your business card, which is something that I definitely recommend doing um, because it's a great way to connect with people even after you're not physically with them, um, if you, or even if you're a person. But if you have your handle on your business card, it's a lot easier to just do all the icons and write your username once. Just one username, keep it clean. They can find you on any platform. Now, um, for example, if like at Susan Sly isn't available for some reason, then maybe do Susan Sly one or get as close to that name as you can. Don't make it Hello Kitty uh, 459 on one platform and then um, Goodbye Puppy 992 on the other one. Like that, that doesn't make sense. People will have trouble finding you. Um, so that's, that's like, that's my recommendation for that. And then um, we have another question. If you have to, if you had to choose two social media platforms for reaching wellness coaches, what would they be? Um, and I would say, honestly, and, and I can have my mom speak to this as well, but I'm a big advocate of LinkedIn for this. And this, the reason being is that you are able to search by people's profession. LinkedIn has a very um, sophisticated search program. Um, for those of us that uh, were in the mastermind, I, I walked through this, but basically you can go to the search bar and you can search wellness coaches and you can actually search up everyone that has listed their profession as a wellness coach um, or a small business owner or different stuff like that. And you can even filter that down by wellness coaches in USA, wellness coaches in Canada, wellness coaches between the ages of 25 to 45. So that's why I definitely recommend LinkedIn as one of your platforms. I would say, um, you know, if, if you're not a fan of, if you're not a fan of reels, I'm not a fan of reels either, to be honest. I, lo I love TikTok, but don't love reels. Um, I'll post on reels and then just leave them to do whatever they want. Um, I would say explore TikTok. I think you're great with Facebook and Instagram. I, I kind of combine those into one group, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn to answer to, like LinkedIn, a hundred percent. LinkedIn is going to be one of my two. Um, I would explore TikTok as an option just because the reach is incredible. Um, I was telling my mom this story yesterday, but I was in a clubhouse room actually with a guy, um, a dog trainer who was talking about how one of his clients sold a $28,000 protection dog because a guy saw him on TikTok and saw that dog and wanted to buy it and you paid 28 grand for it. Can you imagine paying 28 grand for a dog? Um, but yeah, so TikTok can convert and it has converted. So for everyone out there, it's worth exploring in some capacity. Thanks, Avery. I, I want to jump out and step back a bit because, you know, it, and that's the fun thing when I get to coach with Avery, because it's, it's just different perspectives. So um, the first thing I would want to know from Natalie is, Wellness coach is a very broad avatar. Are we talking about a wellness coach for women 50 plus? Are we talking about wellness coaches that, you know, focus on training bikini competitors? I don't know enough to answer that question, but I'll, I'll put some things in some buckets. So let's all write these steps down if you're taking notes, because I'm going to give you, you know, a hundred million dollars worth of advice right now. So number one is when you it's know your avatar and you want to get Donald. as you know focused Ooh. on that avatar as possible so who is your avatar how old are they what is their um you know what is their annual income what is their education level if you're trying to service people who service people who are their clients right? That's the other thing to ask, you know, who are their clients and what is it that, you know, their service is providing? And the next thing is, what is their pain point? And then how do you solve their pain point? 
So if you have, let's say a product that you want wellness coaches to distribute to their clients, it's, it's so important to get clear on what your value proposition is. And you should join my clubhouse room, the FBS on Sunday at four Pacific, because this is what we're talking about, the value proposition. But thinking about that and saying, okay, what value can I add to these wellness coaches? So one, the value is that maybe, you know, I have a product that can add an extra stream of revenue for them. That's a great value proposition. Number two, um, sometimes it can be confusing when they're recommending all these different Different nutritional programs to different clients. And maybe I could just help them by giving them an offer to recommend one program that is going to be a kickstart to that, you know, whatever it is they're offering. And I can't emphasize this enough, the importance of hyper verticalization, because if you try to sell to everyone, you end up selling to no one. So in one of my companies, we only sell our solution, our AI solution to enterprise customers. These are customers that can write multi-million dollar checks. We just um, did an agreement yesterday. It's going to come in around 1.5 million um, for the year for um, a professional service. Okay. So we're in the process of negotiating another one that's, you know, multiple millions a year. So we're very clear on what it is we sell sell, who we sell to. And um, I also, I someone called me at 8 a.m. this morning. I was on my way back from yoga. He's like, I might have a potential client for you. I said, that's not the right client for us. We wouldn't work with them right now. And he's, and, and, and so you might be saying, gosh, Susan, you know, I can't afford to say no. I promise you, the more you diversify, you cheapen your brand. And that's, that's why even for myself, you know, in this women's retreat, the seven figure retreat that I'm running, if you're not interested in getting over a million dollars a year in revenue, especially since I'm co-founder of a $250 million company, this isn't the event for you. If you can't, like your thinking is going to be so big at the end of this, but the, the point I'm making is that even in my own career, and I have no problem saying this, I spent a long time Try, even when we started the agency, like, I just want to help everyone. Not everyone can be helped if they're not ready and shaking her head. She knows high five sister. So I want to encourage you to hyper verticalize Natalie and all of you. Right. And it even goes back to PJ's question, his handle on TikTok, his handle on Instagram, who is he talking to? Don't be afraid. The people I know with the highest engagement penetration, look at Avery's engagement penetration. She's talking to car lovers, right? She's posting cars. She's very hyper verticalized. She's not posting any car. She's not posting a Hyundai that's not going to make it 100 meters down the street. She's posting Bugattis. So hyper verticalization. And for those of you who are privileged enough to be in our mind, Kieran, he spoke about hyper verticalization and how at 21, he has two businesses doing over 50,000 a month. And he's starting a, a startup now that already has an out of the gate valuation at around 20 million probably. Okay. So that's what I need you to think about. I want to answer Lisa's question. Lisa's been waiting and waiting, and waiting. She's like, you know, way back there in the list. So Lisa is in network marketing and direct sales. And we love at, in live coaching, we love questions about this industry because it's a very underserved industry. A lot of people um, either discount the industry or they just won't address those questions. I'm happy to. So the question was, I'm looking for a mentor. And what should I do? So the first thing I would say is that just because you're in someone's organization doesn't mean at the end of the day, and I'm going to get some flack for this, that you're not an independent associate. I, in my direct selling business, which if you guys don't know, has done over 1.6 billion in sales. I'm in someone's organization, but I don't get on their calls. Not that they're not good or anything. I run my own calls right? I have, I have worked with cross-line friends in that company. Um, I had one of them DM me and she's like, Susan, my girls love you. And I'm like, my girls love you. She's like, do you want to do some live coaching together? I'm like, heck yes. I don't care. I'll collaborate because back to Linda's point, I have a very abundant mindset. So finding the right mentor for you 
right? And um, in that company, I do open calls every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, that we do live work sessions. I have people from 14 different lines of sponsorship that aren't financially linked to me. We have 130, uh, 150 people show up. It's free. I don't know how long I'm going to do it because my time is limited. But Lisa, you're more than welcome to plug into that. I'd be happy to have you. And so the, the question of mentorship and, and a coach, I, I was a coach for a while and I charged $2,500 a month and I got so booked out. I had no more room in my schedule to do it. And I, I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore. And here's the reason why. Do you guys want to know why? Almost 100% of people who hire a coach don't have a plan. And they go into coaching going, what's wrong with me? Why can't I break through? And I started to do something different, which was I work with people to establish a plan first. And here's what I found. I love Anne. You're awesome. Anne's nodding. She knows what I'm talking about. Here's what I have found. If you have a plan, then you're ready for a coach. It's not up to your coach unless they are qualified in the area that you're looking at to help you design your plan. We have some amazing life coaches who are part of Agency 8, and I love referring people to those coaches once they have their plan. Because once you have a plan um, and you know what it is you need to do, then your coach's job is to keep your mind on task so you get stuff done. Does that make sense, everybody? Hopefully it does. So that's with, you know, so when I'm doing a business blueprint session, our, my job is to say, let's take a look at your infrastructure. Let's take a look at your goals. Let's take a look at your gaps. And I essentially SWAT test it, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and th threats. We look at all of it and then we say, okay, here's, here's the plan. Just like with Sylvie, here's your plan. Now go do it. Do you think you can do it yourself or are you going to need someone who's going to coach you and keep you on task? And that's what the, the recommendation always is. And so if you're interested in a business blueprint session, I have a two month waiting list right now, but you're more than welcome to apply on agency8.com. Um, but that's what I do. We work for three hours, two 90 minute sessions. We come up with your plan and then I help you decide, do I need a coach right now? Or do I just need to check in with someone? Or do I need to go find some resources and then come back and then go to the next step? So it's thinking about in that, in that regard. And if you want to plug in with those calls, um, Tisha's in here right now. She can just give you the website where you can get the info and you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome to come. It's like this, but it's very specific to one company and, and one thing, right? <laughs> so yes. And it, Lisa, absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. So if someone can just, one of our team can just put the website in the chat, that would be, that would be great. Um, I want to ask a question. Yes, Baby Yoda makes an appearance, which is always fun. Um, I want to ask a question for all of you. Based on what you're learning today, write this down, please. Never leave the sight of setting a goal without taking an action. Never leave the sight of a goal without taking action. And so Avery, I was listening for a long time and Avery gave you so much insight. You know, she walked you through things. I mean, it's, you know, incredible. And if you want to do a, um, a session with her, you can hire her um, for an hour and she'll blow your mind. Um, it's incredible. Just go to agency8.com and you can click on her and she'll um, do a coaching session with you. But my question is, what is the one action you're taking today to move your business forward? What is the one action you are taking today to move your business forward in the chat right now? What are you going to do? While you guys are doing that, I wanted to share um, something as well. Since, since we're writing down and sharing, I know many of you have likely read uh, Think and Go Grow Rich, and I actually want to speak on this as well because I want to I want to give you guys some idea uh, an idea and just briefly tell you guys a story. So, um, for Christmas this year, um, as a surprise, my mom gave me all the books that she read that she credits 
for her success and that, that were an, that were not, maybe not credits for her success, but were an integral part of her growth and her journey to success. And so the first one that I'm reading is Think and Grow Rich, if you guys never read it, or if it's been a while. Um, I just, I, I took a picture of this, this page today and posted it on my social media, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. There are no limitations to the mind except those we acknowledge. And both poverty and riches are the offspring of thought. I thought that tied in very well with what my mom said and what you're going to be doing about getting things done this week. And uh, yeah. That's beautiful, Avery. Thank you. Yeah, I gave Avery um, some books that, you know, have made me millions of dollars. So we've always said to our kids, we're not going to give you a fish. We're going to teach you how to fish. Once we're done paying for your college, we're not paying for anything. And so it's, you know, it, it goes back to this whole theme that we've had today of self-motivation, right? So I love these actions. Avery, are you seeing these? Marcy is going to follow up with you. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Das is catching up on her LinkedIn follow-ups, creating automation so that I streamline, create better communications, phone calls, text messages, SM post. Excellent. Anne is getting in action, creating short training on how to write a book, posting on LinkedIn. Jess is scheduling her weekly clubhouse room for my autism business. Awesome. Awesome. And I'll just, I just want to leave you all with something, you know, with social media, it's fantastic. Like, you know, you're like, oh yes, clubhouse is a new thing. And this is a new thing. This is a new thing. One of my incredible friends who's been on CNN three times to talk about Facebook was actually locked out of his Facebook ad account. If you are only building your list on social media, you are building a dream home on rented land. If you don't have a CRM, you are not, you're not really building a business. I'm mentoring a startup right now. We're starting at a $10 million valuation, $8 million discount investment rate. It's in the e-commerce, social media, and gamification space. And their lead list, I said, how big is your lead list? They said, we have a list of 600,000. I said, fantastic. Let's go. And you know what we're doing with the lead list? We're uploading it to Facebook so we can do target advertising. We can do target um, you know, targeted ads. But again, the a CRM, it's a client relationship management system. So we use a platform um, called Keep at the agency and Renee is our Keep coach. She is our, our person who onboards people and does all that good stuff. But that, that's the thing I want to leave you with. When my friend who is the expert who knows Mark Zuckerberg got locked out of his ad account. That was another message. Diana slacked us and I went, that was another message. So you need to be building your lead list. Don't rely as great as social media is. Um, none of my friends who are millionaires rely solely on social media. It's great to get the blue check mark. It's great to have followers in the but it bring people into a CRM, you don't own your list and you're going to start to see the social media platforms are all um, coming under a degree of scrutiny, scrutiny with transparency, especially with their algorithms. And there's a lot of censoring um, and sanctioning going on. You can like a post or do one post um, and they will shut down your account. Uh, one of our agency clients got shut down and it wasn't even a political post. She was pr doing a product promotion for her network marketing business, and she went to Facebook jail for two weeks. So that being said, you know, thinking about that very deeply and thinking about what your goals are, um, you know, it's really, really important. If you have questions about that, just go and um, to the Agency 8 website, contact us. We're happy to jump on a phone call and answer those questions for you. So with that... I want to thank you all so much for being here and thank you, Avery, for your amazing, amazing training. For those of you in the mastermind, tomorrow, Avery and Diana are actually going to be training on um, affiliate marketing, which is very cool. So um, you guys are going to absolutely love that. And so with that, God bless. Have an amazing day. Thank you, SIYP team, for being here, supporting this, getting the recording done. You guys are all amazing. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>